Hey guys, today we're going to go through a question involving a lot of figures and graphs and just information in general. And for most students, this will be very overwhelming. I believe the reason is because they don't know what to focus their attention on and what to ignore. So today we're going to talk about some strategies that can help in this regard. Okay, so what we have here is the information that's being provided. Uh, I call this the stimulus, and it's no wonder that people get overwhelmed. You know, we've got two figures here, both very different in nature, both very um, data um, uh, intense, okay, there's a lot of information, and there's also a lot of text. You won't know what's important by looking at this page. How we know what's important is by looking at the question stem. So that's what we're going to do. And I'm going to put the question next to figure two and its accompanying information first. Uh, and that's how it appears in the question booklet. Okay. If you're following this question as well. And a lot of people, I'll, sh I'll show you what I mean by that. Okay. Now, a lot of people um, assume that we need to use figure two to answer question 13, but I'm going to show you um, pretty quickly that figure two is not that helpful. Okay. So let's focus on the question uh, first. Okay. Now that we are looking at the question stem, I can tell that the question begins here because it starts with the word what. That's okay. That's a very common clue. The stuff above is most likely context and you have to be careful with the context because it can be sometimes misleading or at the very least, just not very helpful. Okay. Uh, we're going to have a quick read, but just keep in mind its context. Okay. Polygonium seed harvested in July is kept in optimal conditions so that its viability is still over 90% when planted in the following June. However, only about 50% of this polygonium seed planted in June germinated. Okay. Um, let's keep on going. What weather conditions during the intervening months after planting are likely to favor continuing high viability of the rest of the polygonium seed planted in June and remaining in the ground until the next peak germination time occurs. And we can see from the answer options that they're talking about high or low soil temperatures and high or low rainfall. Let's go back to the question um, and break it down further. So what weather conditions? We can see that they're referring to the weather conditions in the answer options. So specifically, we're interested in soil temperatures and rainfall, whether it's high or it's low. Now, what's the criteria? So we're, we're interested in the conditions. The conditions are going to do what? Okay, if we keep reading, uh, what weather conditions during the intervening months after planting are likely to favor continuing high viability of the rest of the polygonium seed planted in June? So we're interested in a, a you know, situation, uh, the right soil temperatures and high rainfall that's going to give us high viability. That's the result that we want. Okay. So the result that we want or the criteria. Okay. The result or the criteria is high viability. Have another read of this and you'll realize that the rest of the information is not as important. Okay. So the, the high vi viability is the thing that we're interested. In. Yes. It's about the polygonium seed but it's the quality of the polygonium seed that we are interested in. Okay. We're not really interested in germination. The rest of it is just, um, it's like context again. Okay. So high viability of the seeds until they germinate next. Okay. But really we're just interested in high viability. So in simple terms, we're trying to figure out is high or low soil temperatures and high or low rainfall going to lead to high viability. If I now zoom out and I go to figure two, there are a few things that I might realize. I might get pretty excited because I can see, oh yeah, there's soil temperature here. Okay. So there's some kind of um, a measure of soil temperature. Uh, we can find out where that is in figure two. It shows uh, soil temperature is the dotted line. Okay. So we've got some idea of what's going on with soil temperature. So you might think, yeah, maybe we can use this graph, but the other thing we get is the percentage germination. 
Now, are we interested in the percentage germination? Not really. We are not interested in germination. We're, we're interested in high viability. We want to know when it's going to be highly viable. Okay, so we're not going to be able to use this graph. And on top of that, what about the references to rainfall? There is no references to rainfall on this figure whatsoever. So to me, this would be a little bit iffy. I can see why some people might be, um, uh, I guess, uh, drawn to this figure because the context, okay, this is why the context can be a bit misleading. The context mentions things like July and June, and we can see that with the date of sampling, there's references to the months, you know, May, June, July, August, okay? So you've got references to the months of the year. And it does also talk you about the fact that 50% of the polygonium seeds germinated. So really, it's quite misleading. You can't actually answer this question using figure two. I'm going to now start fresh. We've got the same question, but this is figure one, which was provided earlier in the stimulus. Okay, again, what are we interested in? We're interested in what weather conditions, which we can see are in our answer options high or low soil temperatures, high or low rainfall, which is going to lead to high viability of the seeds, okay? Or we want to continue to have, or, you know, or maintain a high viability. Now, why is this graph or this figure more helpful? If I zoom in a little bit more, here we go, we've got mean viability. So this scale is a measure of the viability of the seeds. And while it might not seem so obvious to begin with, the temperatures are also on this figure. So it doesn't say soil temperature, okay? But it does talk about the temperature. And again, it doesn't talk about rainfall, but it talks about moisture content. So you need to be able to make a bit of a leap in judgment here, okay? And realize that yes, rainfall and moisture content are related. So those two factors of soil temperature and high rainfall can be related to the temperature and the moisture content in figure one. Okay, so essentially we're trying to figure out which, you know, which of these scenarios is give, going to give me a high viability. So let's have a look at how the viability of the seeds is affected by those two factors separately. Let's have a look at the viability versus temperature uh, and we'll ignore the moisture content for now. Now, if you have a look at this graph, we can see that the temperature is increasing in this direction. Okay, and we can see that the mean viability, if we were to just take maybe um, those data points, they, that looks like the mean viabil viability is actually decreasing with temperature. So if I was to kind of graph this, Okay, we've got mean viability, I'll just call that V. And technically it's log V. I won't go into it, but it's, it's been logged. Technically that's log V, the mean viability. And then this is temperature. As the temperature is increasing, the mean viability is actually decreasing. All right, we can see that this is a common trend uh, with, if we follow those kind of lines there. Okay, they, they tend to be kind of decreasing in that direction. All right, so if we wanted high viability, it looks like we would want the temperature to be relatively low. Okay, so if I use my graph over here, a low temperature would give me a relatively high value, okay, for the viability of the seeds. Okay, so straight away I can look at my answer options and I can say that it's probably going to be C or D because I want a low soil temperature. Okay, what about the moisture content or rainfall. If you look at the moisture content, you have to be careful, it goes from 12 to 19 this way. Okay, now if I pay attention to, like the mean viability is how high or you know how vertical those points are, okay? Now if you look at the mean viability, at 12% it's that high, at about 15% it's that high, and at 19% is that high. So I hope you can see that the 
the mean viability is decreasing as the moisture content increases. So in fact, it's a very similar graph to what we had for temperature. Okay, so for log V, as our moisture content, our moisture content, I'll just put percentage, as our moisture percentage increases, our mean viability decreases. So again, we would want a low moisture content to get a higher vi viability, to maintain a high uh, mean viability. Okay, low moisture content probably refers to low rainfall and hence why the answer is D. Okay, so going back to what we had initially, for us to answer question 13, we had to completely ignore half the information that was provided. Okay, and how did we know? It was by reading the question stem and following the particular um, keywords once we understood what the question was, okay, what the essence of the question was. I hope this video helped you. Um, if you found any of it insightful at all, please give it a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. All right, thanks guys.